Namaste, Yogi. Welcome to class. Today is going to be a different sequence, as you can tell by the description. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is a no wrist yoga class. We'll still be using our fingers and maybe our hands as we transition through a couple of different poses, but overall we're going to be doing no weight bearing on the wrist. So we'll be skipping downward dog, high plank, uh, side planks, chaturanga, wild thing, anything where you're putting weight onto the wrist. So this class is great if you have sensitive wrists or if you just need a bit of a rest day for the wrists. This will still be a vinyasa flow sequence. So we'll be moving, connecting with our breath, building a little bit of heat, maybe even sweating. I don't know. If you've attended our classes before, then you probably know the drill. You're probably gonna sweat. If you're looking for a class that is more restorative and gentle and yin style that will also be no wrist classes, there are plenty here on this channel um, for you to explore instead. So this class, you're still gonna be moving, you're still gonna be sweating just as a heads up. Just because we're not using our wrist does not mean we're not gonna be working hard. Flo and I always do a wrist warm up whenever we practice and also for all the other vinyasa classes that we teach here on the channel. But if you notice that you need a longer wrist warm up or if your wrists start to hurt throughout your practice, then we recommend checking out this video that's linked, which gives a breakdown of several different wrist warm ups that you can do to make sure that your wrists are healthy and ready to bear weight. But for today's class, of course, there's no weight bearing movements. So whenever you're ready to begin, we will start in a child's pose. Knees apart, set the hips down towards the heels. Maybe the forehead can touch down on the ground. If so, you can gently rock your head to the left and to the right, massage your forehead into the ground. Find some stillness here. Begin to deepen the breath. Take a moment here before we begin to move to just give yourself a little extra compassion in this moment little extra love for still stepping on the mat, even though your wrists maybe aren't feeling so great. We're so proud of you for making time to move in your body and connect with your breath. It's still really important. Each exhale, let the hips sink down a little bit more. Let the chest get heavy towards the ground. Begin to engage your ujjayi breath if that's part of your practice. That gentle sound of the ocean in the back of the throat. We'll keep the lips sealed. Only breathe through the nose for the remainder of class. Keep the eyes closed, but start to lift the hips up towards the sky. We'll come into puppy pose. Maybe walk the knees in so they're about hip distance apart. Walk the fingertips forward. So now the hips are directly above the knees. And again, let your chest hang down towards the ground. If it feels good on the wrist, you can come onto the fingertips. So you sort of tent the hands or spider the hands. And straighten the arms so you feel that stretch in the shoulders. Otherwise, you can continue to just let the forearms rest down on the ground. Another option is to bend at the elbows, bring the hands behind the head. A little bit more of a tricep stretch there. And a 
whatever variation you took, take just three more breaths here. Really bring all of your attention to each breath. Release the hands back down towards the ground if you had them lifted. And all together, blink open the eyes, make your way into a forearm plank. Step the feet back. So the hips are about the same height as the shoulders. Tuck the tailbone under, start to push the ground away. And the arms are parallel to each other on the ground. So you still have that external rotation of the shoulders here. And then start to pull your toes closer to your elbows. Begin to activate the whole front side of the body. Engage the quads, engage the hamstrings. You might start to shake, that's fine. And now push the toes away from the elbows, almost like you're trying to tear your mat in half. And then again, pull the toes in and then push the toes away. Let's do five more. Pull in, push away. Keep the tailbone tucked under as you pull and push. If you need to set the knees down, you can. Last two, last one. Great job, set down the knees, set down the hips, sphinx pose. Engage the glutes, but relax the front side of your body. The gaze is ahead, let the shoulders melt down away from the ears. Try to broaden the collarbones to find a little bit more space in the front side of the chest. Soften the breath. Three more breaths here. Lower the chest down. Maybe the forehead comes onto the hands, bend the knees. Windshield wiper the legs. Release that tension in the low back. The forearms come back down onto the ground. Keep the knees on the ground and then start to lift the hips up. We're gonna meet in dolphin pose. So tuck the toes under and then start to walk the feet forward. So again, try to keep your arms parallel to each other. If the hands come together, that's fine. It's not really that much of the focus. Try to press your chest closer to your quads. Start to pedal out your legs one leg at a time. And then begin to straighten both legs. Gaze forward towards the thumbs and then start to shift forward. Nose comes close to the thumbs. Bring it back up, dolphin pose. Let's do four more. Shift it forward, move slowly. Again, you can always modify these poses however you'd like. Child's pose is always there for you as well. Let's do two more. Bring it forward nice and slow. Last one, bring it back. 
Gently set down the knees. Start to walk the hands back. Lift the chest. And then you'll step your right foot forward. Low lunge. Start to send the hips forward and down. Tuck the tailbone under. Engage the left glute. Find that length in the spine. The crown of the head reaches up towards the sky. And then inhale, arms reach straight up. Cinch in the ribs. Again, engage the left glute as you send your hips even farther forward. Now see if you can hold this with the legs and we'll start to make some more movements with the arms. We're gonna inhale here. As you exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, straighten the arms, send them back behind you. Open the heart, open the chest. And then start to reach the arms forward as you internally rotate the arms so the backs of the hands come close to each other. And then dome the upper back, so you're rounding the shoulders. Inhale again, arms reach up overhead like you're holding a beach ball above you. Exhale, cactus the arms. Feel the shoulder blades glide down the back. Inhale, arms reach and open. Baby back bend. And exhale, hands come forward. Round the back. Backs of the hands come close. Inhale, arms reach. And exhale, start to straighten the leg for half splits, the front leg. So you might need to walk your right heel forward a few inches, at least for me, I always do with the proportion of my legs. Windshield wiper that front leg. Fingertips down on the ground. Keep a little micro bend in the right knee and just let your body sort of lay down towards the ground. Keep the engagement in the right hamstring the right quad. Start to rebend the right knee for warrior three prep. Left leg floats up and back. Left foot is flexed. So the left toes are pointing down towards the ground. Keep a micro bend in the right knee. And a lift in the chest. And then start to bend both knees. We meet in chair pose, top of the mat. Arms reach up towards the sky. Press the knees together. Set the hips low. See if you can pull the shoulder blades down your back, but still send the energy out the fingertips. Start to lift the heels. Option here, of course, like everything. Try to balance on your toes, build some strength in the feet. And then begin to lower your hips all the way down towards the ground. And if this is not accessible for you, of course you can just stay in chair. And then we're gonna come all the way up to standing. Again, try to keep the heels lifted the whole time. Once you're there, gently set down the heels. Forward fold all together. Step the feet hip distance apart. Maybe cross the arms. Let your body hang, let your head hang. So you inhale, release the hands, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Again, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step your right foot back, low lunge. Gently set down the right knee. You can either keep the right toes on or you can untuck the toes if you like, your choice. 
Start to send the hips forward and down. Tuck the tailbone under. Engage the right glute. Cinch in the ribs. Pause here for a moment. Reconnect with the breath. Make sure your hips are feeling good. And then we'll bring in the arms. Inhale, arms reach up overhead. Take two breaths here before we begin into the movement. Really find that length in the spine. And exhale to cactus arms. Release, baby back bend, inhale, open. And exhale, bring the arms forward, backs of the hands. Round the back, inhale, arms to the sky. One more round on your own. So you might actually notice that there is some micro movements in the wrists as we're going through this. And that's exactly what we want. We want to keep that mobility in the joints. Even the ones that are injured, it's always good to keep moving it if you can. Arms reach back up to the sky and start to straighten the left leg for half splits. So there's that saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. So oftentimes people get injured and then they completely stop moving altogether especially the joint that is injured. And of course, it's good to uh, make sure you're staying safe and always being pain-free, but it also comes at a cost if you uh, are stagnant for too long. So these little micro movements in the wrists, even some wrist rollouts on your own, always good to do. Of course, consult a doctor first if you're not sure, but movement is incredibly healing, but I don't have to be preaching that to you. You're here on your mat doing the work. Great job. Last breath here. Rebend the left leg, warrior three prep. A little micro bend in the left knee, a lift in the chest. Right leg is completely straight. Imagine drawing your inner thigh up towards the sky. So if your toes are pointing out towards the right, you want the toes to be pointing down towards the ground instead. We meet in chair pose. Take your time to get there. Move slowly with control. And we'll do that heel lift one more time. Again, this is completely optional. Lift the heels, keep the hips low, and then start to lower the hips down. All the way to the heels or as low as you can go, and then come all the way up to standing. And gently set the heels down, forward fold. Heel to the feet, hip distance apart once again. We're here for about five breaths. So you could either just keep the hands down towards the ground, option to interlace the hands behind the back, send the hands up over the head. Your choice here depends on what feels good in your body what feels good in your wrists. And release the hands if you had them behind the back. All together, we'll inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Keep a soft bend in the knees. Come all the way up to standing. Arms reach up overhead. 
and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, step your left foot back, crescent lunge. So right leg is forward, left leg is back. Inhale, arms reach. You might need to adjust your stance so the right leg is almost 90 degrees. Little bend in the left knee. And now keep the legs where they are. You're gonna to start to lean the chest forward, fly the arms back behind you, palms face down towards the ground. Start to lift your hands up towards the ceiling, keep the arms straight, and then bring the pinkies as close as you can together. So again, lift and together. Lift and together. Continue on your own. This might be really intense for you, for your triceps, especially if you haven't been using your arms all that much, which is understandable with sensitive wrists. So just do your best. Last two. Last one. Great job. Inhale, arms back up to the sky. And then pyramid pose. So start to straighten your right leg. Maybe step that left foot forward a few inches. Left foot is 45 degrees out. Keep a little micro bend in the right knee. As you inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, come down over the right leg. Option to sway the hips a little left and right. And then inhale, halfway lift. And you're gonna pivot the right foot. We'll come into Prasarita, standing forward, straddle fold. So the feet come a little bit wider. You can keep your fingertips down on the ground. back to your breath if you've started to lose it already. Reconnect with this breath. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, spider lunge to the left. Left leg is bent, right leg is straight. Your option to lift the left heel or keep it down on the ground or point the right toes up to the sky or keep the sole of the foot on the ground. As long as you feel the stretch in the right hamstring and the groin, then it's all good. Start to move towards the front of the mat, warrior three. Both arms reach up overhead, straight ahead. So you have a straight line from your fingertips to your left heel. Little micro bend in the right knee. And inhale, come all the way up to standing for tree pose. This left sole of the foot comes inside the right thigh. Or you could also place it down on the right shin or kickstand it on the ground. Your choice. Hands can just come down to your sides. Stand nice and tall, engage the glutes, engage the core. Slow down the breath. Left knee comes forward, and then extend the left leg straight out in front of you. Left leg is completely engaged, so really try to reach your left leg as high as you can without leaning back. So you still have that same stance as the tree pose as you did before, but the left leg is just reaching forward. We're gonna make our way into a seat from here, so a half pistol squat, so if you need to use your fingers, you can but slowly lower the hips down, 
Maybe you have to reach the hands forward to counterbalance the weight. Awesome job, set the hips down. However you get there is great. Maybe slide the hips back so you're back on your yoga mat. Keep the left leg straight. Right sole of the foot is gonna come inside the left thigh, just like we did sort of with that tree pose, but with the other leg. So left leg is straight, inhale, arms reach to the sky. And exhale, fold forward over the left leg. Just as far as you can, you don't have to reach or strain to try to grab onto your foot. With each inhale, you lengthen. And each exhale, release. Here for a few breaths. So make it good. Soften in. Lift the chest back up. And then lift the right knee up. You're going to cross the right foot over the left leg. Now, if this is already too much on the hip, then you can just keep the right foot uh, on the right side of the left leg. Your choice. Coming into a seated twist. So bring your right hand behind you. You could either hold on to the right knee or you can hook it with the tricep or the elbow. What we're targeting here is a twist in the spine. Release the twist. And then all together you'll bring your foot to the outside of the left knee, so if it was not already there, then place it there. Start to lean over to your left, and then bend the left leg all the way close to the hip, and then come back up to a seat. Grab your right foot, bring it close to the left hip. We're coming into full cow face. Maybe lift the hips up so that you can slide the knees down, and then come back to a seat. So we're not here for too long so if this is incredibly uncomfortable for you then you don't have to take it so deep you could also just sit in a comfortable cross seated or maybe take double pigeon but if you're here and you don't really feel much of a stretch then you can gently lean the chest forward come down onto the legs You had your chest lowered, start to lift it back up. And then all together we come out of this pose. Just bring both legs forward and then shake out the legs. Maybe windshield wiper the knees. And then we're all going to meet at a forward fold at the back of the mat. So however you get there is great. Maybe cross the ankles, lift the hips, walk the feet back. Take a couple breaths here. Settle into the forward fold. And then inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold. Soft bend in the knees, come all the way to standing. Arms reach. And exhale, forward fold. Let's do two more of those. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale to standing. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Move with the breath. Inhale all the way to standing. This time we're just going to exhale, release. Hands come down through the heart. Step your left foot forward. Come into crescent lunge. So you might need to adjust the feet forward and back. Again, just like we did on the other side. So that your left leg is almost 90 degrees. There's a slight bend in your right knee. Set the hips low, tuck the tailbone under. Again, cinch in the ribs. Inhale, arms reach up towards the sky. And then keep the legs here as they are. Start to lean forward with the body. Send the arms back. Keep the arms straight. And then again, we're gonna pulse. Hands come up towards the ceiling and then pinkies together. Lift, together, lift, together. Let's do 10 more. Keep the arms straight. Keep the chest lifted so you're not collapsing the shoulders down towards the left knee. You almost have that straight line from the crown of your head down to your right heel. Last two. Last one. Great job. Inhale, arms back up to the sky. Pyramid pose. Maybe shorten the stance, straighten the left leg, and release over the left leg. Find some relief for the left quad. Let the head hang heavy. Maybe sway the hips. Keep that micro bend in the left knee. And then pivot the left foot, prosarita. Standing forward, straddle fold. We're here for about five breaths again. So your choice, you can just stay here as you are. If you wanna take a little twist, you're welcome to. You could also interlace hands behind the back, send them up over the head. Whatever your body feels called to do, do that. Slow down the breath. Reconnect with that stillness within. All together, the wrists come underneath the shoulders as you inhale, lift. Spider lunge to the right. Right leg is bent, left leg is straight. Again, your choice on the variation. Slowly transition to warrior three. Arms reach up overhead like Superman. Little micro bend in the left knee. And that inner right thigh is again reaching up towards the sky. So you have that internal rotation of the right leg. Inhale, come all the way to standing as we meet in tree pose. Once you have the foot placed, then you can just release your arms down to your sides. Engage the glutes. Pull the shoulders back. Relax them down away from the ears. Stand nice and tall. Bring your right knee forward and then extend the right leg straight out. And again, lift it as high as you can without 
leaning back too much. Engage the quad, engage the hamstring, flex the right foot. And then that half pistol squat, again, we meet down in a seat. Take your time to get there. Once the hips set down, then again, slide back on your mat. Right leg is straight. Left sole of the foot comes inside the right thigh. Inhale, arms reach. Lengthen the spine first, and then exhale, forward fold over the right leg. Instead of pushing or pulling your way into the pose, see if you can invite that sensation of releasing and letting go with every exhale. Letting your breath take you deeper into the pose as opposed to your muscles or strength. Let the breath lead the way. And to lift the chest again, walk the hands back. Lift the left knee up. And then again, either left sole of the foot to the inside of the right knee, or you can step it outside. Left hand comes behind you. Take that twist. Either hook the tricep, the elbow, whatever you can, whatever feels good. As long as you're focusing on that twist in the spine, then it's great. You're doing the pose perfectly because there is no perfect pose in yoga. You can never be perfect in any of these poses. As long as you feel good in your body and you're focusing on the functionality of the pose, the movement, what you're meaning to be stretching or lengthening or strengthening, then it's great. As long as you have your focused attention on the breath to keep you present in the moment, then you're doing yoga regardless of what pose or shape your body's in. Release the twist. And then bring that left foot again outside the right knee if it's not already there. Start to lean your body over to the right and then bend the right leg. So the right heel's close to the glute and then bring your left heel close to your right hip. Maybe lift the hips up to slide the knees so that they're stacked. We're here for about five breaths, so make this pose feel good for you. If it already doesn't feel good on the hips, then make whatever adjustments you need to. This whole practice of yoga is this self-exploration of the body, the introspection of the mind. So we actually try to move away from focusing so much on the poses and focusing more on that internal connection with our bodies, with our minds. At the beginning, if you're new to yoga, this is very challenging and the mind is constantly chattering. But the more and more you step on your mat, you develop that deeper connection with yourself. And you arrive in the practice, moment by moment, breath by breath. Knowing that you're exactly where you're meant to be in this body, 
in this pose, as long as you're in this breath. Gently make your way out of this pose. Release the legs. Out in front of you again, windshield wiper the knees. And then gently lower down onto your back for bridge pose. So set yourself up so the heels come close to the fingers. Maybe they touch, maybe they don't. And then begin to ground the heels into the mat, lift the hips up, engage the glutes. Keep a little bit of space between your chin and your sternum. Now keep the hips lifted and start to reach your right leg straight up towards the sky. Point the right foot. Engage your left glute even more. And now start to lower the hips down, let them hover above the ground, and then lift them back up. Let's do two more. Nice and slow. Focus on engaging your hamstring and your glute more than your left quad. Last one, lift it up and then set the right foot down. We meet back in bridge pose and then switch legs. Left leg shoots straight up towards the sky. And then three dips, slowly lower down, let it hover, engage the glute, lift it back up. Let's do two more. Left foot comes back down to the ground. We meet in bridge pose. And then slowly lower the hips all the way down to the ground. And then windshield wiper the knees. Relax the low back. Stack the legs together and then bring both legs over to your right. Supine twist. Extend your left arm out to your side. Right hand on the outer left thigh or on the rib cage. Maybe close the eyes. Tune into the breath. Relax any muscles that are still holding on to tension. Coming into our last couple poses of class, so we really want to focus on slowing the breath down. Releasing, relaxing. Help the knees back through center and over to the left. You're scrunching the muscles in your face between your eyebrows, your forehead. Then gently relax, maybe even close the eyes.
And again, help the knees back up to center. Hug them into the chest. Give yourself a big squeeze. Maybe rock left and right. And then extend the legs. Make your way into Shavasana. The feet naturally fall open, palms face up towards the sky. Maybe tuck your shoulder blades under just a little so you have more length in the collarbone. Continue to soften the breath. Try to make your exhales just a little bit longer than your inhales. So you really consciously shift your body into the parasympathetic nervous system, that rest and digest. And in this state, your body can repair, restore, and heal. So Shavasana is a very important part of your practice. I encourage you to stay here in Shavasana for a few minutes, at least to give yourself this time to repair and heal. But I'll be ending the video here. Thank you so much for joining me today, for not making excuses for not doing yoga and not moving in your body and connecting with your breath. So proud of you. We'll see you in another video soon. Lots of love headed your way. Namaste.